You're watching Byline Wilmington on CBS 10 WILM. Here's your host, Don Ansel. We're back. The W Legacy is our topic this morning. Dr. Candace Breadbenner is an associate professor of history at UNC Wilmington. Dr. Stephen Meinhold is a political analyst from UNCW. Um, Katrina, uh, let me just throw the name out and let's get reactions, Steve. National embarrassment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Candace. another another national crisis in which Butch emerges weaker rather than stronger. All right, you mentioned Dick Cheney. Uh, you didn't seem to be too much of a fan. Uh, I'll well, just give, uh, give me some response to that. Now. I, I think we have. I, um, you know, I think the, uh, amazingly enough. For a presidency that has really tried to control the message, there's at least one person in this country that the Bush administration gave incredible access to, and that was Bob Woodward from the Washington Post. And Bob Woodward has written this series of books in which, really, when you put them all together, it shows um, a, a number of these very senior, senior people, either in cabinet positions or in the White House, that were doing things that uh, were very partisan, very ideological, uh, look at what they did at the very beginning of their administration when Bush said, Are you I'm talking about uh, the vice president? Vice president doing these things, the president doing these things, cabinet secretaries doing them. Uh, we can go down the list. Do you think this uh, happens in all administrations? Are, I mean, is well, that business are, is as usual? Is politics partisan? Yes. Yeah. But there, um, there are politics that are played out differently. Uh, Reagan was a very big fan of, in, of inviting Democrats into the White House to talk to them and listen to them. Uh, George Bush Sr. was known for his relationships with members of Congress. Bill Clinton uh, ran on the third way, which was to triangulate, to actually work to, to try to moderate your policies so that they were a, could appeal to, the, uh, to Republicans. Ken, yeah, so and, what, but, uh, and Cheney. Uh, oh, Vice sorry. President Cheney, I want to, because okay. uh, we'll move on from that, but I, mm -hmm. some, any, uh, well, I mean, I think that, that there's, I'd say in the 20th century and in the 21st century, I can't think of anyone who was more zealous <laughs> that was in the White House uh, of pursuing this idea of executive privilege. Um, Karl Rove, uh, I think, well, what do you think? <laughs> I, I, he had a, uh, quite an imprint on the, uh, on the administration and on, on he did. That's politics. He faded out of the picture in the last, the, the last months, but now he's back and he's trying to shape the Bush legacy. I think he seems to be more concerned about it, it seems, than George Bush in some respects. Any comment on well, Mr. Rove? You know, clear, clearly um, Obama uh, and his advisors learned a lot from the way Rove ran the 2000 2004 election. And so he may have a legacy, but it's severely diminished. Um, we will not see Karl Rove again in national politics. I will venture that. How significant do you think his imprint, uh, uh, the president's imprint, George W. Bush, on the Supreme Court? What's his, how, how significant will his imprint be forward? He had two... Uh, uh, yeah, Roberts and Alito. Two nominations. Um, he stumbled a little in the beginning because uh, he had a, a nominee that, that wasn't successful. I think... Did he change... Did he change the, uh, the balance of the court? Not in any dramatic way, because even though O'Connor left, we still ended up with, a, in a sense, in a, swing. a swing vote. Mm -hmm. So not yet. I think one more appointment would have made a huge difference, but he didn't have the opportunity to make it. Much of a difference? Well, he didn't tip the balance, but what he did was he set the, he set the balance in concrete. So we're going to have a 5-4 conservative majority on the court now for the rest of all of our lifetimes. I mean, he, he appointed two very young jurists. They're very solid conservative votes. They have voted right down the conservative line every, er, in every case that has come before them. So we now have a solid 5-4 majority, and I don't, see any, I don't see any chance that Obama will break that, even in an eight-year administration. So we're, we're, we're looking at a five conservative so court he had for many years to come. So I think it's a substantial impact. It's a, so also, I, I think his number is somewhere around 45, maybe a little bit higher than that percent of all the federal judges in the country now have been appointed by by Bush. That's well, what yes, happens if you in look below term. the Supreme Court, there right, definitely if you go down has below the Supreme impact, Court, absolutely. Uh, you see a large mm -hmm. number. And they were very partisan in the selection of judges. You know, judges we've... The appellate circuit, I mean the appellate and the trial court. We, we've, we mentioned the economic 
meltdown, uh, but we haven't focused much on it. How much responsibility for, the, for that, the national and the international uh, economic crisis is history apt to lay at the feet of the president? And it, it, is it really a presidential issue? Steve? Or Candace? Well, I think there's a lot of blame to go around. So I think that Bush will share that with, an, with an, a number uh, of others. And I think that the, un, if I should say, the unfortunate thing for Bush, if this economic crisis was going to happen on his watch, that it happens so late that he can take emergency measures, but the long-term big initiatives are really left to the next president. Any thoughts on this? Right. Uh, I think we know historically presidents get too much credit when the economy is good and they get too much blame when the economy is bad. Well, they take credit when the economy is good. Yeah. So I think, I think yeah. realistically, um, the, the actions the president has are really quite limited. Yeah. I mean, well, I, th I think that, that um, your assessment is true on both the economy for Bush as, as well as the, the war. Will, will his legacy note the decision to fund uh, medication to African nations for treating AIDS oh, victims. That was a pretty big Absolutely. breakthrough. I mean, the, the, the relief programs, in HIV, AIDS, and malaria have the potential to save millions of lives. And I think he should be given considerable credit for that program. And I, of course, it will continue. In the broad sweep of history, uh, might the last eight years be known as a time when the country moved more center from right? During the Bush, during the George W. presidency. Well, I would argue that the, the country has been center now for several decades. I, I mean, remember that Bush. You think he was elected? Barely as a won centrist? in 2000. I mean, he got 50 percent, well, less than 50 percent of the vote. And in 2004, he really barely beat um, John Kerry. So I don't, I don't think you can. I don't think we can characterize the country as right. I think that's been a manipulation of the electoral politics by, by the Republican yeah, Party. I, I would agree with that. Um, so I, I, I don't think we've moved all that much. Um, and and I, don't, I don't think that they've been successful in moving the American public to the conservative direction. And I don't think that they've driven them to the liberal direction either. Right. I don't think yeah. people are terribly I, different. I agree. I don't think we can look at the Obama election as necessarily moving us in the liberal direction either. You think it was a centrist uh, mm -hmm. election? Yes, I do. That's going to do it. Dr. Candace Bredbender, thank you. For joining us this morning, Dr. Thank Stephen you. Meinhold, always great to see you. Be sure to join us next week when our guest will be Representative, State Representative Carolyn Justice. We're going to talk about the state of the state in the upcoming uh, legislative session for North Carolina. If you'd like to see uh, Byline Wilmington online, go to wilm-tv.com and click on Byline. That'll do it for this week. Be sure to join us next week right after Face the Nation. I'm Don Ansell. Have a great You've week. been watching Byline Wilmington on CBS 10 WILM. Join us every Sunday morning at 11 as we explore the issues.